So Streamlabs is finally released to Mac OS client. Now we know what you're thinking, whoa, wait, you're using a Mac? Don't you usually run Windows? Well, yes, I do, but actually I run both. But with the release of Streamlabs for Mac, I'm gonna give it another look. So let's walk through getting it set up and getting the best possible settings for Streamlabs on Mac OS. Hey, welcome back, Swan Techno Tim, and I focus on gaming, streaming, and technology. Let's talk about Streamlabs for Mac OS. Now you're probably familiar with OBS for Mac OS or OBS for Windows, and even Streamlabs for Windows. Well, Streamlabs has finally released a Mac OS client that runs on a Mac. So today, we're gonna get it set up on our Mac and walk through the best possible settings so that you can get 1080p 60 frames per second. So let's hop right in. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go out to streamlabs.com and download the new Mac OS client. Okay, once we're on Streamlabs, let's download the Mac client. Another thing we're gonna have to download is a utility to capture desktop audio. Now, unlike Windows, Mac OS can't capture desktop audio, but here's a download that can. So Streamlabs recommends downloading the I Show You Audio Capture utility. So let's download that. Okay, so let's install that first. Okay, the system extension is blocked, but let's unblock it. Okay, so we'll be prompted to reboot. We should probably reboot now. Okay, so now let's verify it installed correctly. So let's go into preferences. Let's go into sound, output. Okay, and so we see right here, it's listed. I show you audio capture. So that means it installed correctly. So now we need to configure the multi-output so that we can capture sound from things like games on our Mac or browsers and everything else. So let's search for the audio MIDI setup and complete the rest of this. Search for audio MIDI setup. So now let's create a multi-output device. Click plus, create multi-output device. Now let's pick the devices we want the audio output to go to. So I want this to go to my speakers as well as the I show you audio capture. You'll wanna make sure that one's always checked. So this step is really important. We wanna make sure that the drift correction is only applied to our output device. So let's uncheck the I show you and check our speakers. This might be headphones or any other output device you're using. So this will make sure that there's no audio lag between the devices that you're using. Okay, so let's go back to the sound preferences and choose this device now. Go to sound. Okay, so once you choose that, let's finish installing Streamlabs and get that configured. Okay, so let's launch the installer. Agree if you agree. Drag this into our applications. Close out. Now we can inject this and let's go into our applications and let's launch Streamlabs. Say okay here. So now it's asking for access to our microphone. We'll wanna say yes here. And now it's asking for access to our camera. We'll want to say yes here too. So now it's going to ask us to connect our streaming account. It supports Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, Facebook, DLive, Nemo TV. But I stream on Twitch, so I'm going to choose Twitch. So now we'll connect our Twitch service. Techno Tim, enter password. So now it's going to ask for two-factor auth. Hopefully you're using this. So now it's going to ask if Streamlabs has permission to do all this for your Twitch account. This is pretty standard stuff for Streamlabs, so we can hit authorize. Okay, so this is a super nice option right here. So if you already have OBS on your Mac, you can choose to import all your settings, scenes, and your entire configuration. But if you don't, you can just start fresh. Let's start fresh. So this next step is choosing your camera and choosing your microphone. I'm gonna choose the internal webcam, but you have options here to choose other cameras. And the same with your microphone. So now you can choose a theme to start out with. If you don't have one, you can choose one of these or you can pick some later. So I'm gonna skip this for now. So next is the optimization wizard. This is gonna test things like your CPU, your GPU, as well as your internet speed to give you the best possible settings. Let's see what they say, but we can tweak this later. Okay, it just hopped right into Streamlabs and it didn't report the results, but let's see what they are. So if we go into settings, we go into stream, we go into output, Okay, so this did a really good job of determining my streaming settings. This is really close to what we'll pick, but we'll get into that later. Okay, so let's see what else it configured. Since we connected our Twitch account, we should have our Twitch stream already connected. And here it is. This is super nice because now we're connected to all of our events. Okay, so remember how we did some audio configuration just a little bit ago? Let's finish that. So hop into audio, and we can see that our microphone is already working. See at the bottom? Check, check, check. It's working. 
But if we try to play something like music, you'll notice it's not playing. So here's how to fix it. So let's go back into settings and go to audio. So I'm gonna choose the I show you audio as my auxiliary device too. And you'll see as soon as I choose that, our audio is coming through. So if we pause it, it stops and we play, it's playing. I need to turn that down a little bit. Okay, so we have webcam, we have microphone, we have desktop audio so we can play music. We're connected to our Twitch account. So let's take a look around. So let's pick an overlay theme and apply it. So this uplink one is, is pretty nice. Let's install it. Okay, so that was super simple. We have a theme. Okay, so let's hide this Nerd or Die source. If you like Nerd or Die overlays, I'll have some links in the description below or where you can download more. Okay, so this is a stream starting scene. Let's configure a gaming scene so that you can get an idea of how to configure it. Okay, let's choose this in-game horizontal. Got a nice stinger transition there. And here's our gaming scene. So let's do a couple things. I'm gonna remove the stuff at the bottom because I like all of my metrics at the top. Move. Move this. Okay, so that's looking better. Now let's add our webcam. We have two frames for a webcam it looks like. Let's choose the 16 by nine one. So let's move our webcam up here. Looks good. And let's get rid of the small overlay here. I don't really have anything to put in it. Now let's add our webcam. So we'll click plus here in sources. Choose a video capture device. Click add. Let's name this webcam. And this is where you would choose your webcam device. So you might have something like a C920 or another webcam or a cam link connected to a mirrorless camera. This is where you'd choose it. Okay, so once we have a webcam, let's fit it inside of this frame. So a pro tip here, if you need fine tuning, you can actually use the arrow keys to adjust. Okay, the placement looks good. Let's drag this source on top of the webcam. There we go. Okay, so the webcam is looking good. Obviously, you would adjust this and uh, position a little bit better, probably get the lighting a little bit better, but I'm recording this now, but you get the idea. Okay, so we'll wanna position our alerts. The first thing I'm gonna do is move these alerts to the top. I always want my alerts to be on top. So let's drag them up there. Okay, so the alerts are on top. Now let's position the alerts. You can put these anywhere you want, probably not somewhere too distracting, but I'm gonna put it in the middle for the sake of argument. Let's make them a little bit bigger. Okay, so now let's test our alert. So we didn't talk about this, but this is one of the great features of Streamlabs OBS. Our alerts are integrated and we can test them from right here. So if you look at the bottom and we see test widgets, you click that, we can expand it. And we see follow, subscription, donation, bits, host. So let's test a follow and see what that looks like. All right, there's our nice alert from Nerd or Die. Looks pretty good. Nice, now those are white, so let's actually adjust our UI to be white as well. So the easiest way for me to do this is just create a filter and then remove the saturation. Let's create a filter. Let's add one. Color correction. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now I have this black and white theme. Now we know a lot of themes give you the option to adjust colors within the theme, but I just went ahead and added a filter to each individual icon and element so that I could remove the color myself. I think Nerd or Die even supplies white icon for you, but either way, this works. Okay, so the next thing we'll need to do is add our game source. If you wanna stream your entire desktop, if you're playing a game locally on this machine or you wanna stream some other content, let's add a desktop source to do that. So click plus, let's add a display capture. And so now we're gonna choose our display. So let's pick display zero because this is the one we're on. And so this is capturing our whole entire display. And so one thing we'll wanna do after creating this is drag this to the bottom. We want this to be the lowest layer. Okay, so a reminder, this is good if you wanna stream your entire desktop, but what if you wanna stream a game that's connected or any other HDMI input? So that's where we'll choose something like the video capture device. So let's disable this, the display capture, so we're no longer capturing our desktop. And let's add a new source. 
video capture device. So I have a cam link attached to this. The cam link will allow me to capture any HDMI input. So I'm choosing this. And we'll want to add a new source instead. So we don't see our cam link here, so we'll need to toggle this button. Let's name this cam link. Click add, select the option. We should see our cam link in this list. And there we go. You might have to change your preset here. Okay, so let's adjust our game. Once you have your video setting nicely in here, let's move it to the bottom of the list. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's test our alerts. That's what a follow looks like. Okay, so this is working great. You can continue to customize your overlay, but I'm gonna hop into settings now. Okay, so let's check our output settings. We wanna be sure to get the best possible settings for 1080p 60 frames per second streaming. So the first thing we'll wanna do is change this to advanced, the output mode. Next, we can keep the audio track at one. We can keep the encoder to software x264. This means that all of your encoding is gonna happen on your CPU. If you find that you're using too much CPU when using Streamlabs and streaming, you can change this to Apple VT H264 hardware encoder, which will offload that encoding to an encoding chip. But we're gonna keep ours on x264. Next, you can uncheck this checkbox because we're gonna hard code the maximum bitrate. So we don't wanna enforce streaming service encoder settings because we know what they are. You wanna make sure that we aren't rescaling the output here. And for rate control, you wanna make sure that this is on CVR. We want a constant bit rate. So for our bit rate, the max on Twitch is 6,500. We won't use a custom buffer size. And for CPU usage preset, you can keep that to very fast. If you find you're using too much CPU, you can drop this down to super fast or ultra fast, but very fast should be good. We'll keep our profile to none and we'll keep our tune to none. Next, let's go to audio. So audio, we can keep this at 44.1 kilohertz. And for channels, we'll keep this to stereo. We already set our audio options earlier, so we won't have to change anything, but verify these are set. And in video, we'll wanna make sure our base canvas resolution is 1920 by 1080. And we'll wanna change our output scaled resolution to match that. So let's set it to 1920 by 1080. So this means our desktop is at 1920 by 1080 and we'll be streaming at 1920 by 1080. Next, our downscale filter. This shouldn't matter because we're not actually scaling, but the best settings are Lengthos, sharpened. For FPS types, we're gonna keep this at common values. We're gonna make sure this is set to 60. We aren't gonna change anything in our hotkeys. We aren't gonna change anything in advanced. Scene collections, we aren't gonna change. Notifications, we're not gonna change appearance we're not gonna change, and remote control we're not gonna change. Next, let's change our layout. Here's where you do it. You'll click this grid right here and go into layouts. And this is where we can choose where each element lives in Streamlabs. So this looks pretty good to me. However, I like to have my feed vertical. So you can choose some presets here. And this one actually looks pretty good. But if you wanted to change it, you can just drag these around to where you want it. But I actually like this one. So let's save changes. Okay, so this is a little bit better. I have my mini feed on the left where I can see all of the events. I have my main window in the middle, and then I have other controls below. And if you want, we have stream chat over here on the right. So this is perfect for me. I can look at my events, replay my events if I want. I can see all of my sources. I can see all of my elements. I can see my audio mixer, and I have chat on the right. So now we're ready to go live. All you need to do is click the go live button. So that pretty much wraps it up with Streamlabs OBS for Mac. It looks and feels exactly like the Windows version, which is to be expected. And it feels really close to what OBS feels like on a Mac. So if you're coming from Windows and using Streamlabs on a Mac, or you're using OBS on a Mac, now you have the option to use Streamlabs OBS on Mac OS. So did I or Streamlabs miss anything? If so, let me know in the comments below. As a reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, Hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, stream on my friends.